I will start with the vocal. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to solo the vocal track and listen to what we did yesterday. If you remember, we recorded the vocal and the guitar at the same time. And it still sounded pretty okay. I'm solid steel in scolding steam. I'm a cog in the machine. So now, let's listen to that again with the mindset of what could be better, right? So we're going to listen to the track again and we say, okay, we, you can close your eyes. Uh, we've made sure that nobody will steal your wallet. <laughs> so close your eyes and try and imagine what could be better. What could be better than Wilna singing? Nothing. But the sound of Wilna singing, what could we do better? I'm solid steel in scolding steam. I'm a cog in the machine. I'm sick and tired of the same routine and I'm sinking like a submarine. Here's what I hear. I hear S's being a genuine problem. Okay, why is that? The reason why we have a problem with S's is, is we made a compromise on the recording. We wanted to be able to capture the emotion of Will singing while he's playing guitar. Consequently, we had to put the microphone in a way where the guitar would not ruin the vocal sound too much and the vocal microphone would not ruin the guitar sound. Consequently, we don't have the optimal vocal placement. It's still pretty good, but it's not as good as if we had Will this far away from the microphone in a perfectly well-treated room. So we're going to have to deal with the S's. That's okay. We have the technology. <laughs> then I hear a little build-up in the middle. I hear a little, kind of a, a little bit of a mask in the middle of the vocal. I'm lacking a little bit of the air thing there. And most importantly, I hear a bit of a uh, peak action going. You know, he's really into it, and he's pretty close to the microphone. The closer you are to the microphone, the more dynamic problems you're going to have, right? Because air. Contrary to popular belief, air is the best insulation you can have. And air is a great compressor. And so if you're this close from the microphone, you get less of a compression action than if you're this far from the microphone. Consequently, we get a lot of peaks. So I'm going to play the track again and see if you can listen to the S's, the mid-range, uh, the lack of air. So S's, mid-range, lack of air, and also that dynamic thing where on certain words, uh, the vocal sticks out. Okay? Before I start fixing, I would like you to be able to try and internalize the sound of the problem. Here we go. I'm solid steel in scolding steam. I'm a cog in the machine. You hear the air, obviously. Um, if you don't, that's okay. It's an acquired taste, it comes over time. But I'm going to point out the dynamics to you. Well, the S's are obvious, but, but listen to the dy uh, dynamics. I'm solid, steel, listen to those two syllables. If you have a plane on which the vocals should sit, those kind of move this way, right? And then the machine, it's not a peak, it's a, there's a um, frequency peak in the upper 3K where you can, it hurts your eyes a little bit when you listen to it, check it out. I'm solid, steel, in scolding steam, I'm a cog in the machine. Okay. It's actually ma. You hear the, the syllable on ma? Okay, that's god awful. So we're going to fix that. <laughs> it's not you, honey, it's me. <laughs> <clears throat> so today I'm going to use nothing but uh, universal audio plugins with my trusted little satellite thing. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to DS. Why do I DS first? I DS first because if you start screwing with the sound, especially if you start compressing and doing stuff like that, you're actually going to make your problems worse and magnify them. So if you, wanna, if you have a problem, like a genuine spotable problem, take care of it first before you start compressing. So let's go for that. I'm solid steel. I'm, I'm soloing the frequency at which I'm going to DS. And then I'm going to load the threshold. I'm solid steel. And maybe slow it down. I'm scolding steam. Maybe not. I'm solid steel. Okay, so we start with this flat. I'm solid steel. Uh. In scolding steam. And the est. 
I'm solid steel. Mm hmm. In scolding steam, I'm a car. I went a little too far, right? You, you hear it work. The problem is that it's, it, it is a real problem in this recording, so maybe I'm gonna ease up a little bit, but I think I can fix that later in the mix. <laughs> I'm solid steel. In scolding steam, I'm a cog in the machine. Well, that's great. So, without? I'm solid steel. In scolding steam. With? I'm solid steel. In scolding steam. I'm okay, so that's the built in uh, UAD, yes, sir. Very simple. Um, so, next thing I'm gonna do, I still have that ma thing, right? That yeah thing. So there are several solutions to that. I could automate an EQ on that one word. So I could put an EQ on, and every time that frequency annoys me, I could just go whoosh, right? But I'm way too lazy to do that. <laughs> so no, I'm not going to do that. The next thing I'd like to do is I'm probably going to high pass this, because I hear the, the, the energy of the guitar getting in the way. So I'm just going to high pass the bottom of the vocal quickly with a fairly uh, steep wrong button. That's always my problem. I use the wrong button all the time, which is difficult in my line of work. Uh, <laughs> all right. All right. So I'm just going to high pass the bottom. High passing the bottom lets me clean up the mud at the, at the beginning. Somebody asked Alan, you know, how do you get a clear? Is that person here? Or is, are they getting side? How do you get a clear mix? Very good question. Thank you for asking. I'm still looking for the answer. But the reality is there is a mid range buildup. And now with digital, there's also uh, there's a middle range buildup and an upper middle range buildup in the 3K area. The part that hurts your eyes and your teeth, that's the 3K area. And then the bottom, uh, you know, the loom with the 300 has always been a problem. And so I high pass a lot. I do a lot of high passing, provided that I don't have any face problems. In this case, considering everything bleeds and bleeds into everything, I have to be very careful. So I'm going to use very gentle curves, maybe not 36, maybe let's be a gentlemanly, almost British, uh, and use a very gentle curve here. Let's see this. I'm solid steel. In scolding sea. Higher. I'm a cog That's too much. Do that again. I'm solid steel. Cute. In scolding steam, I'm a car. So we started here with no DS or no high pass. I'm solid steel. Okay. In scolding steam, I'm a car. I'm going to play that again and point something to you. When he says, I'm solid steel, he goes, I'm solid steel. Listen to the mm. Hear that little mm round, uh, resonance here? See if you can detect something in that family. On the on the flat recording, check it out. I'm solid steel. You hear his nose on um. I'm solid steel. Yeah, you can hear that. All right, I had to point it to you. Two mixes from now, you're gonna point it out to yourself, right? I have to show you this, but once you start forming your taste by listening to enough music, that will irk you. You listen to this, you're like, ugh, you know, I gotta get rid of that. So. It's, it's something in the back of your spine, you just go Ugh. So here's, this is a high pass filter at 45 hertz, uh, 18 dBs per octave. No, sorry, 66 and change, which is completely irrelevant because I'm not even sure this is, these numbers are real, but this is where it is right now. I'm solid steel. Okay, so check it out. This is flat. I spoke too much in between. This is flat. I'm solid steel in scolding steam. And this is with. I'm solid steel. In scolding steam, I'm a cop. But it's not, it doesn't sound processed. It just sounds sweet. All right, I still have the machine problem. So I'm going to use this fantastic thing that they just, I was like, really? You, you're releasing this? Yeah. This thing's awesome. So it's, uh, it's called the Fatso. It's, uh, I, I've been using the hardware unit for the longest time, and it's, uh, it's a compressor and tape emulator, although I'm not quite sure it really sounds like tape to me, but uh, it is so useful and so wonderful. And he has a, um, a circuit here called warmth, which has nothing to do with warmth whatsoever. It's the biggest mis misnomer in the history of, of recording. It's actually a high-frequency de-esser. 
It's a high frequency limiter. So you can put the warmth on if you have something high end that annoys you, right? There's something that's just like, eh, you put the warmth on, it gets rid of that. That's what it does. So I'm going to compress a little bit on the bus compressor just because I can. I'm going to put the transformer emulation because it does good things for transients. And then I'm going to put the, um, the warmth on to see if I can catch those annoying peaks. Let me gain stage it. This is all without a net, of course. I'm being caught with my pants down. I put a belt. I'm solid steel mm. in scolding steam. I'm a cog. Not enough gain. I'm solid steel. I'm solid steel. More gain. I'm solid steel. In scolding steam. I'm a cog in the machine. Not enough. Do it again, Sam. I'm solid steel. <laughs> you know what? I'm going to use this like this way. I'm solid steel. In scolding steam, I'm a cog in the machine. Again. I'm solid steel. In scolding steam, I'm a cog in the machine. It's coming. It's coming. A little more. I'm solid steel. A little less. In scolding steam, I'm a cog in the machine. Aha. It's coming. Check it out. I'm solid steel. Yeah. In scolding steam, I'm a cog in the machine. As a reminder, we started here. I'm solid steel. In scolding steam, I'm a cog in the machine. And now we're here. I'm solid steel, in scolding steam, I'm a cog in the machine. Rock and roll. All right, so you noticed that we have two or three dBs of compression. Basta cosi, two or three dBs of compression. That's it. Now, <clears throat> it's so tempting. There are so many plugins. I mean, I have an LA2, should we use it? Yeah. No, it sounds fine, <laughs> leave it alone. You know what I mean? It's like, it looks pretty when it goes like this, but that's not what we want. We, <laughs> <coughs> we want it to sound pretty, right. different. All right, so I'm now at this point in the mix, I'm like, okay, I'm fairly content with this. But I feel that the vocal is a little dark, right? So still. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a little bit um, another concept of analog summing. It's called analog integration. Remember I told you you have a source, you have the dangerous uh, summing box, and then you have the recorder. I love to be able to insert, say, an EQ in between the converter and the two bus. It's the same as having an EQ in line in your console, right? Except here you can choose everything, you just patch it in. So what I've done is on channel 9 and 10 of my mix, I have inserted a great reverb EQ. Um, and 10 is the vocal and 9 is the bass if you were paying attention. Um, so I'm going to start with the vocal. One of the great advantages of being able to work with analog summing is you have a lot more headroom, meaning you don't clip as much. I'm sure you had this problem with your mix. And at the crucial point, about four hours into the mix, that point where you start screwing up, um, everything is lighting up red. You think it's Christmas in your studio, right? The idea is, what's going on? You're overwhelming the headroom of your mix. Oh, no big deal. You just take all your faders and bring them down 6 dBs, right? That's how it's done. Have you taken the chance and the time to listen pre and post that 6 dB move, what it does to your reverb sands, what it does to your two-bus compression, what it does to your uh, stems? It's chaos. So I chose to bypass that, and I use analog summing, and I never have to do this. Because, say I want to add 6 dBs to my bass drum at the end of a mix. I put it in between my converter and my two bus. I am now no longer in the digital domain. I can crank the hell out of that, and there's no problem. It just goes boom, 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 which is conducive to dancing. <laughs> so what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to insert this bottom EQ on the vocal. 
And I'm going to see if I can find a little bit of that shine we were missing since the beginning. So I'm just going to loop this and show you stuff. So the first thing I'm going to do, because I can, I'm just going to use oh, the, the high pass again. In scolding steam, I'm a cog in that works. the machine. Go look for some high end. Um, they have an 80K, 18K range up here. Uh, yeah. I'm solid steel. I'm going to exaggerate so you can hear what I'm doing, and then I'm going to do reasonable um, civilized amounts of correction. I'm on, I'm on a peak thing here at 18K. Now, we all seasoned ladies and gentlemen here. I can guarantee you that very few people in this room hear 18K. So use your ears, right? So I'm going to add some 18K. I love 18K. 18K is my oyster. But no, really, um, just listen to it. I'm solid steel. In scolding steam, I'm a cog in the machine. So I like the frequency, but it brings the ma problem back out, right? So I'm going to use a little bit of it, just a little bit. I'm solid steel. No more. In scolding steam, I'm a cog in the machine. So maybe what I could do is remove more of the ma thing, since it's in the 3K-ish range, let's look for it. I'm going to look for it. I'm solid steel. In scolding steam, I'm a cog in the mash. How about this? Cog in the mash. That's genuinely annoying, so we're going to take that out. Cog in the mash. Aha. So now that I've removed my problem more, I'm going to be able to boost the high end a little more without any adverse effect. In the machine. Maybe I could even start a little lower. In the machine. So we started here. I'm bypassing the EQ. I'm solid steel. In scolding steam, I'm a car. I'm solid steel. Interesting. In scolding steam, I'm a cog in the machine. I think that works a little less, and I think it's going to work in context. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove a little bit of that low mid build up that's dear to our friend over there in the back. I'm solid steel. In scolding steam, I'm a cog. That, that sounds like he's got a head cold. Can't have a head cold. He left England to no longer be cold. <laughs> right? Yep, so now that, that's not reality. His head is clear. Let's remove this. I'm solid steel. Not that much. In scolding steam, I'm a cog in ah, the... That removes a little too much body. I need that body. I'm solid steel. In scolding steam, I'm a cog Oh, that's nice. The so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to add a little bit of fat at the bottom, like in the 180 range and add that, but still remove that head cold problem. I'm solid steel. Too much. In scolding steam, I'm a cog in the machine. I think this is going to work. I'm sick and tired of the same routine, and I'm sinking like no a submarine. OK. I'm going to stay there for now. All right, so as a reminder, so don't be fooled by levels. Of course, it's very difficult for me to match levels here. But if I remove the EQ, the de the um, you know, the de harsher the high pass, and the uh, de -esser, it sounds like this. This is the original recording. I'm solid steel. In scolding steam, I'm a cog in the machine. I'm sick and tired of the same routine, and I'm sinking like a submarine. And this is what we've done so far. I'm solid steel. In scolding steam, I'm a cog in the machine. I'm sick and tired of the same routine, and I'm sinking like a submarine. All right, a lot more control, a lot more together, ready to be integrated in the mix. Not as buoyant, right? It doesn't have the same vibrancy. 
But in this particular case, because of where we're going, I think this is necessary to, to do this. I know from experience that if I don't do what I just did, I'm going to hate myself in the morning. <clears throat> so let's leave the, the vocal alone. Let's listen to the bass. 